Criticade! Bam. What's up, weebs? Welcome to the Criticade Criticast, yeah. where your ass is going to get critiblasted. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully not. That hopefully not. <laughs> Unless you're into that, and then then we do hope. Then we will go to your house. <laughs> no, no, no. Put no, your no. address in the comments. I just... if. <laughs> If you're into anal, I wish all the anal upon you. Yeah. <laughs> by us. By Jacob and I. What? Well, no. <laughs> all right. So here's the dealio. Yeah. We already recorded this half of the uh, subject of this episode for yeah. last week's podcast, but we lost it. Uh, yeah. Because my... my yeah, whatever. We lost it. That happens a lot, if you haven't noticed. So that means we gotta <laughs> we gotta do a quick run through of, of both yeah, of our last two weeks. Right. Um... Uh, it, within the last two weeks, I have played all of Mass Effect. I, all of them? Uh, all of them. Including Andromeda? No, 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 no. The trilogy. I, I, I have, yeah, the trilogy. I did not play Andromeda. Okay. I probably won't for a while. Fair. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I watched a lot of shitty anime, which happens a lot. God, I can't even remember what I watched a lot, oh, two weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I started... Fuck! What what else did I play? Oh, I I played a game that you you've already seen us playing it. We'll talk about that when which, it happens. Which one's that? Hive Swap came out. Ah, yeah. So, uh, but you've you've seen those episodes already. You know that. Fucking um, love Homestuck. I I, I, I've never <laughs> I did. Read Homestuck. I, I love Homestuck. Yeah. I mean, we'll we'll, we'll talk about this. We'll in talk the about that in the series because we got an interesting dichotomy going yeah. on with our because I I'm aware of Homestuck very sure. aptly aware. Yeah, of Homestuck, yeah, but so. not. Uh, so what did you do over the past two weeks? Oh God, I did so much. I started college. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm 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 going to school in Chicago. I'm commuting. Yeah. Uh, so I I have been reading a lot of comics on the train. Awesome. Uh, and I've been I've been watching a lot of Doctor Who, classic Doctor Who on the train. Right. I finished the second Doctor. I'm a, I'm I'm a little little few episodes into the third Doctor. John Pertwee. He's he's great. He's fantastic. Yeah, he's lovely. He's so charismatic. I I kind of hate the like the theme of that his era where it's like he's just grounded he's, yeah he's grounded and he's on that's like, fair but but, but he i makes love it. him oh yeah he's fantastic if, if it wasn't him i, it, I could see yeah, the show probably getting boring. canceled yeah exactly yeah but no um, he, he made it he made it he special made it and interesting a lot of fun uh yeah but that's that's awesome yeah that's doctor who's always fun and uh uh a show that i was highly anticipating premiered uh uh the orville oh yeah uh, i did, still haven't seen it it's Okay, uh, it has it has a lot of potential to get better. Okay, uh, if you okay. guys don't know what the Orville is, it's uh, Seth MacFarlane starring, writing, directing, producing uh, uh, a Star Trek Next Generation comedy homage. Yeah, but it's really more homage than it is comedy. It is comedy. Yeah, and it eh. it flounders in the comedy aspect, and it really shines in the Star Trek aspect. Hmm. Um, I could see that, which I, I, is a big issue because Seth MacFarlane as well. Yeah, uh, but I'm he sure doesn't he does. do well with the comedy because the comedy's weird and not written well. Cause it's kind of <laughs> written like Family Guy. Yeah, it doesn't really count well. Yeah, no, I get that. Did you did you ever see um, a Cascade of a Cartoon? Whatever his his oh, like yeah, Cavalcade side of thing. Cartoon Cavalcade comedy? of a Cartoon. I have comedy. not seen that. No. Yeah, it's it's okay. It's like. He he's not funny when he can't just like cut away to a no. random ass joke. Yeah, so I, I get that. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I watched. We watched. I don't know if you're up to date on Good Game. Uh, no, I, no, I haven't seen anything past okay. the second episode. I heard the fourth episode's terrible from Jacob. It's other Jacob. It starts really well. Like I was like, oh my god, finally, Good Game is hitting its stride. Yeah. And then the end is so rushed and weird and oh, kind of no. like, like, oh god, why did you do this? And and so I was I was kind of like, oh man, it's just such a mixed bag. Yeah. Like it'll have really funny moments and really good moments, and then it'll be trying way too hard yeah sometimes i don't know i i i really like it i like i really want to like it <laughs> yeah that's probably it's, gonna be it's... my experience with the orville as well oh yeah yeah same because because you know a lot of people are comparing it to galaxy quest oh okay uh which i love Makes galaxy sense. quest great yeah, movie sure. it's it's a great star trek the original series homage right right but this is not an homage to the original series at all yeah, yeah this is all next generation okay which i have no nostalgia for i don't i, I i've only seen one season of next generation i've seen I all haven't, of, i haven't seen any of, of next gen yeah so I, I i'll be interested to see how i think about that it's it's good <laughs> uh, uh yeah i've apparently the first season's bad uh, okay so i need to get past that yeah that's fair 
Uh, so let's hope the first season of The Orville is bad and then Whatever. it hits its stride. Yeah. Uh, the first season of almost season. everything is bad. Sh- shout outs to you, The Office. <laughs> <laughs> the, I mean, The Office, I, I, Parks and Rec. Uh, fucking. Oh, yeah. Uh, there, there's like exceptions, like Cheers, the first season of that is fantastic. The Flash. The Flash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. The only good season of The Flash. Uh, Arrow is still weird. And like, Arrow season five is the best fucking season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, th- they have a trope for that on TV tropes. It's yeah. called uh, early installment weirdness. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. I mean, it's that's just how it is. Like, yeah, early on. So, uh, so let's I, get into the wait, first subject. Wait, no, 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 no. I'm not done well, with my, my oh, two I'm weeks. Sorry. Yeah, it's been a while. Oh, okay. Uh, Hurricane Irma hit. <laughs> Uh, yes, in the past true. couple of weeks, uh, my girlfriend was in Florida. She's safe. Good. She actually came home for the past week. I spent a lot of time with her. Oh, that's it was really nice. really nice. Yeah. Good time. She's gone now. Uh, I saw it. Which oh, did you? Did you like it? I think it might be. Like, I've had a big internal struggle struggle <laughs> the past week because I saw Baby Driver earlier this summer, and I adored that film. <laughs> and I think it hit my personal sensibilities more. Really? Because oh, so I be... loved this movie. Oh, okay. It cool. was It was so scary. Yeah. It had so much heart to it. It had so much love put into it for, for the source material. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, I have a big thing with with coming of age stories and and uh, especially you know little kids not little kids but like like teenager early teen kids sure. preteen kids sure uh, going around and doing preteen kid things right. and talking like realistic preteen yeah, kids like, and like stuff. Goonies or like yeah stuff like uh, yeah, that like those. that stuff is like hits me sure like like in a, in a very personal spot because yeah, I really yeah. like that kind of stuff it brought back memories for me. Uh, and and this movie does it perfectly. Cool. Probably, probably the best that's, I've ever seen. I mean, that's what I didn't like about like the original It movie. Yeah, like you guys got, the book is fantastic at that. Like, there's everyone is like, oh, Stephen King horror writer, but like he's he's so much. He's just a good writer in general. Yes, and and that's what a lot of the movies are missing. And I think that's why a lot of the times he doesn't like hit the movies of his stuff. Yeah, no, this one has fantastic writing. Okay, well, uh, no, the no, that's char- awesome. I'll have to watch. That. Yeah, no, it, it's. I, I, I normally don't watch it. horror movies. It scared the fuck out of me. Did it? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was not okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, cool, I can't wait. Yeah, so so <laughs> I to the audience, check out it. Uh, I really liked it. Yeah, uh, I've been it. talking about it a lot, a lot to everyone <laughs> I, I see this week. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, it's popular for a reason. I highly recommend it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so let's That's get awesome. to the first topic. The first topic is Dream Daddy. <gasps> is Dream Daddy offensive? Uh, question mark, exclamation uh, mark, question mark. What? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I think maybe. And yeah, I want to I want to preface this because I didn't preface it on the last podcast and we didn't we lost it. So we lost I'm going to preface matter. it now. Uh to the writers of Dream Daddy, if you guys ever see this, I don't know why you would. You don't uh, know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but I uh, I don't think that you guys were. it's it's possible that you guys were, but I don't think that you guys were set out to make an offensive product, a okay. racist product. I don't think you're racist. Okay. I think that in the end, it is important with all white writers, or not all, primarily the lead writers being lead white. White writers, yeah. Uh, and they include a diverse of cast. It's important to put that under a lens of are you doing this for the right reasons or are you doing this for monetary gain, clickability, Tumblr sharage, yeah. SJW uh, versus uh, right wing arguments on the internet? I, but like that's, I, I feel like that's our job and like that's that's the audience's job. Exactly, yes. And then that, that's why we're talking about it. Yes. Um, but ba- basically, uh, I, I, I think they do a really good job with, with the diversity of the cast. I, I, I've never, I didn't see anything that was like outright uh, race like playing with their race or like yeah no I uh, agree like, my my main issue is with Amanda, Amanda. and her core design yeah. um because I believe that she is designed to be as clickable as marketable as shareable uh, a character in both dialogue and design and being hipster and being quirky and being ironic and also being a minority uh, uh, see that's where you lose me a little mm-hmm. bit um but I also think that part of that that marketability is is has a writing purpose. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I like this point that you're about to. Make. Yeah, it's well, like, I'm not sure which point you're talking about because I have a couple. Okay, but like, one is I, I think she's she's marketable because she's your daughter, and you're as when you're playing through the game in the story, you're supposed to have an emotional connection to her. Yes, and, and that's why she's so likable and so relatable to to 
people from our generation and, and the core. Yes, because we're the base, demographic. Because we're the demographic. Yes. And so to to make her a good character, that's why she's so marketable. And yes. and sometimes that does. I would be fascinated to to see uh, if Dream Daddy wasn't a huge success, like on in the Tumblr fan base, mm-hmm. um, to see if she still kind of felt uh, a little bit corporate because she does. There are times when it does feel yeah. like she's pandering, but I, I I don't know if that's because we know it's a success or just because you I know would, what I mean. Knowing because it's such an already established brand of Game Grumps, yeah, and knowing that the, that the demographics that they do hit from from seeing the fan base on the internet and also yeah. going to the live shows. Right. <laughs> and, and you know, I, I see the group of people that it right. attracts. And they, they know. And they know. They know who they're trying to attract with Which their is, I mean, that's good marketing. That's Exactly. Good. <laughs> it's, it's really good marketing. Yeah, and they, it's, they know their audience. No matter what happens, this is a good marketing case. It, it, it was perfectly marketed for, the, for just the fan base yeah. that, it, that it was trying to attract. Mm-hmm. I think, but your argument's that it's kind of, it, it can feel heartless at times. Yes, it, it, it has an I, issue where the the... It might be the writer's voice, but Maybe. occasionally it comes across as just soulless ironicism. I, I I just never I've never felt like there are times when I think that they're they're pushing the humor, like they they're trying way too hard yes, to be funny. I, I that's that's what I'm talking okay, about. Okay. Yes. I've just never felt it be soulless. Like I, I think occasionally the brand of humor can be very like Tell me like, oh my god, I'm such fucking trash I, kind of <laughs> shit, you know? I guess, but like knowing that Vernon wrote it and and knowing a bit about him, that's, yes. that's just kind of like That's just kinda of how that's he just is. kinda of how he is. It's mm-hmm. like uh, so I don't know. It's it it I was thinking about it this last week because we mm-hmm. did this podcast and fucking we lost yeah. it. But that's like, why that's why Jacob <laughs> and I aren't arguing as much yeah. because we've heard each other's points. We're and like, we understand. Yeah, we understand now. Yeah. Um but I, I I was thinking about it and it uh, I thought a lot about death of the author and this is like kind mm-hmm. of the perfect like example of like Can you explain of the, death of the author? Oh the sure, yeah. Uh for the audience if you don't know death of the author is uh, a literary a theory that that you should approach a work, usually a work of like uh, fiction, like written word, um, as though you don't know anything about the author, that the author doesn't exist. That's fair. Um like like you know you don't know anything about the author. It's completely separate from their lives and whatever. And then there's like, there's anti death of the author too, to kind of uh, approach it and be like, well, I know the author really well. Here's why some of these things work. Yes. Of that. So like it, I, I thought about that a lot. I think with uh, such a, a big brand behind the game and mm-hmm. such a big marketing boost by this YouTube campaign, by these famous YouTubers, famous by these YouTubers. public figures. I mean, it's it was trending on separate. Twitter. Yes. It, it's trending on Tumblr a lot. A so lot, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to it's, separate it's hard. the author from the work. Yeah, very much so. But yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those are our arguments for... for um, yeah, I, I, I oh, keep don't... I didn't hate Dream Daddy. Yeah. There were parts that made me laugh. There were parts that, that made me feel emotions. And we're not done. <laughs> yeah, we're not done. We'll, 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 we'll go back, back and try some it. more. Maybe I'll end up liking Amanda. I thought she, at points, I didn't like her character arc. I yeah. thought she came across as too shallow of a teen. Like I guess. Like the kind of person that I would hate She's, when I was in high school. Yeah, but to be fair, I knew a lot of those people in high school. That's why it rings true. Like, that's fair. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's what teens are like. Teens are selfish and kind of mm-hmm. like uh, unapologetic and shit. So like, I, I don't know. It ra- It was fine. She's yeah. as likable as a teenager can be. I <laughs> highly disagree, especially after I saw it this week. Oh, yeah? Yeah, very likable and realistic teens. I guess. Uh, and I mean, I guess like... Um, but that's also 1980s teens. Yeah. It's different. Stranger Things says that too. Yes. This, like, well, they, really they're, 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 they're more middle school-y in, in they are. Stranger Things. They are. But, but in this, it's... I mean, it has uh, Mikey... Oh, uh, does it? Yeah, yeah. He plays he plays Richie Tozier. Oh, oh, cool. And uh, he's fantastic. And uh, oh. uh, Sophia Lillis, who plays Bev, also just wonder. All the kids, <laughs> all the kids in it are great. Whatever. This cool. has nothing to do with Dream Daddy. No, sure. But uh, uh, Richie, Richie, Richie boy, uh, <laughs> our our boy Finn Wolfhard. Yeah, man. He's he says some dirty shit in this movie. That's really <laughs> funny. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. What were, oh yeah, realistic teens. <laughs> yeah, especially after I saw it and I saw some great realistic portrayal yeah. of teens. It just Amanda didn't like 
like Amanda kind of came across as like, haha, like I'm ironic and I drink and also all my friends hate me. <laughs> I fucking garbage. I love pizza. Yeah, but, but there are like, I know there are there, there a are lot of teens are like that. Like you just described like someone, like a real person, <laughs> like someone could watch this video and be like, oh shit, that's me. <laughs> I, I'm sure a majority of Let's Plays will watch this, yeah. Let's Play fans watch this video and that'll be them. <laughs> And there's nothing wrong with that no. kind of person as long as you have substance to your personality that isn't that. And I think they do. I especially think that there's substance to her in relation to your character. I think yeah, that has I, to be. I, I think I think her I think the dad the, the primary lead dad, yeah, his connection to Amanda is a lot more interesting than Amanda's connection to the dad. Oh, okay. Uh I believe that she is I a see that. a big thing for the dad. Uh, and for Amanda, she clearly loves him a lot. Yeah. But he's not essential to her character arc. I I wouldn't agree there. I mean... Like, her final line is like, is like, I love you, Dad. You've yeah. You've been there for me. Right. And but, the, but then we, we were there for her. And, like, there were points where we guided her through that shit. Mm -hmm. And, like, encouraged her to, to be better at school. And, and encouraged her to That's get over true. her friends. So it's, I feel like there's a good enough connection there. I, I feel... Yeah, I, I can like, see to that. But, yeah. I, I, I see what you're talking about. Because there's... Amanda is there as kind of a prop for you to be like, oh, this is why you're a good dad. Mm. Whereas, like, uh, you, you help her through her all her shit and... Um, you've raised her well so that she does nice things for people. She's yeah. great with kids. Like it's, it's all about you, the player. Yes. Uh, more than it is about her. She, but that's she, not. she is a basis of exposition to share how good of a dad you are. Yeah. But I don't think that's a bad that, that's, thing. It's not a bad thing. It's, it's a, it's a good writing. <laughs> yeah. Issue. And, and the reason why I got so a, a little, a little up in arms, <laughs> sorry, just got to make sure that we're actually recording. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We, we, do that if we lost this episode, <laughs> I freaked the fuck out. Uh, yeah. It, um, the thing that the, the reason why I got so up in arms about the possibility of this being a racist thing, yeah, is because you're seeing we're seeing this a lot now, where writers, oh yeah, we if didn't there's talk about this. if there's if there's a product a project like a TV show that's failing, a game that needs attention, a game that's being kickstarted, a movie mm -hmm. that's that's needs to be put in put like like put in a good place, uh, a, a video game that want uh, a triple A video game that'll be want to be more shareable. Yeah. It has this they have this new tendency to add in a quirky hip young black person. I mean, I guess it's it's new for the black person to be to be trendy. Yes, but no, token yeah. black is like yeah, no token black is a <laughs> thing. It's a thing. It's just it's just. I mean, you're seeing this a lot nowadays. I mean, I mean, p the Power Rangers TV show is in hot water for it recently. Oh really? Yeah, because huh. uh, they they introduced a new character yeah. that is like she is the the fourth Powerpuff Girls and she's black and has blue hair yeah, and has yeah. wide hips. Yeah, and it's like that's kind of creepy. Yeah. Uh, don't why are you adding an objectified <laughs> black girl to the Power Rangers? Yeah. And it's and it it's it's when I say objectified in a lot of ways, I don't mean specifically sexually. Yeah, just kind of um there's a prop. There they are like, a prop to make it more profitable. Yeah. A, a prop to make it more marketable. A prop to, and, and that's also the issue with token black characters. Yeah. Um but, except I, I mean, I love South Park. Token Black is actually a good. Yeah, that's that is a joke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. It, it's a He's it's a, a subversion of the trope. Yeah, I love it. Uh, and and uh, it, it's never it's never a black person portrayed realistically. I either it's always yeah. it's always a character that just is a white character written by a white person. They just filtered over black skin over them, and it just it feels icky. It always feels wrong. Uh. And I, I, I have a huge fear that tr uh, like hipster black girls are going to start becoming the new loud black girls in in a in in terms oh. of racist stereotypes. Oh, they will. I, yeah, but, but like I, w when when we're talking about Dream Daddy and how it relates to that, uh, I don't I, I don't think Amanda's color ever comes into. I I don't think it's ever played up. I too it's bad. it's not it's not played up. It doesn't have to be played up. Yeah. In fact. Uh, I, I'd like it if they made even the slightest passing reference to it. It's just the fact that this is a character written by white people from white people experience that acts just like they did when they were a white teenager and they don't understand what it's like to be a black teenager. No, neither yeah. do I. And it, for, for it to be just so much 
uh, uh, so successful in the white teenage market, it it, it feels a little icky to me. Okay, uh, and my my counterpoint to that was always, um, I I think that Amanda's color is is more a, a gaming necessity, and and I the, I agree with that. Yeah, the the fact that your dad can be whatever race, and then your mom is ambiguously uh, racial too. Um, makes it so that it's believable if you want Amanda to be your biological daughter. It's believable. Yeah, uh, and, she and could be any race. She could be any race. So yeah, she's related to you. And, and I think that she's primarily black coated, though. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I I guess. But like you said, it doesn't it doesn't come up. Really. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't matter I, so much. I don't to think the that story. that's a bad thing. I I think I don't that think it's, it, it it can be a bit of an. Like it's not a bad thing for in terms of game narrative, yeah. like judging the game inherently by itself. Mm-hmm. But when judging it as a product that is socially aware, that is social justice oriented, that has a big social justice fan base, <sighs> it's important to take into account that marketers are now uh, making money. Uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> that marketers are now making money off of white guilt, well, and there's a big white well, guilt market on on the internet, especially in in a lot of the white social justice areas. There is, but but see, on the flip side of that, part of part of what I agree with in, in the whole uh, progressive social justice warrior uh, cloud is that there should be more representation I of people of color, and and I th- I. I don't think that Amanda is so heartless that it's offensive that it was a purely marketing no, I, decision. No, I, I also don't agree. Uh, yeah, I, I, I also agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, just, I just think she has things about her that come across as, like, to me, just a little bit like, ugh. Okay. I got I to gotta take a, a deeper look at that. We are both white guys. <laughs> I would love. I would love to hear the opinion of someone who isn't. Yeah, I, I agree. Not. And, and, and um, it, but it's also important for people like us who who have the social means because of course there's always going to be issues where uh white marketers will not listen to actual black consumers so it's important for yeah. people like us uh who who are the people that sadly it, it's true that these people are going to listen to and 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 we have to be able to police our own race a little bit on on saying not you police, can't you can't police i mean you, we can't tell other people what to do yeah and like it's important to to lay a watchful eye and and make I, sure well but it's it's also important not to step over the opinions of minorities yeah and to and to step on minorities i think it's important to criticize something to the best of our ability uh as harshly as possible yes. and that's what we're doing yeah and, and i think that that's a good thing and i think that mm-hmm. that's it's, where we're at with, um with this piece like I can't say I can't say this is objectively this is, terrible. Uh, yeah, this is objectively racist. I am objectively offended by this because it doesn't. It's well, you not can say my, you're offended by it. Yeah, but well, like <laughs> my sensibilities are, but I'm yeah, not personally. You're offended. not personally offended because uh, I'm not black. I, I, I don't have, have that experience. I have a rule. I am never offended for someone. Yes, that's perfect. Like I, I just like I, I recognize something. Like if I see something, and I'm like. That might be offensive. That's but what, like, yeah, that's I, I'm what I'm never, talking about. Yeah, in it's, you're just saying that. Like, it, it <clears throat> might be offensive, but we don't. Yeah, we exactly. Don't it's. <laughs> I mean, it's, comment what you think below. Yeah, I please, mean, please uh, comment and talk to us about it. Because start an argument. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen. Yeah. Well, no, but like we like talking about it, and we like Game Grumps, and we love. Yeah. We liked Dream Daddy. Uh, I, I, I did like it a lot. Yeah. We're, we're critical people, so mm-hmm. if it, we like talking about this shit. So go ahead yeah, and hit. Sorry us up. for dropping in my own. Uh, social justice <laughs> agenda in here whatever uh don't mean to don't mean to to, to step in with my with my view the, the only thing i have against social justice warriors is their name and like it sounds silly no it's it sounds like like social justice isn't a fucking war i mean like, yeah i know that's why it sounds silly to me it, it doesn't sound to me it, it's it creates a lot of that like hostilities like I agree, when you're yeah. like, I'm a social justice warrior. I have to beat you fucking down. It's like, <laughs> no, we we're just talking about a, like a social construct. Yeah, I, <laughs> Please stop. I have big issues with a lot of um, white social justice. Oh, yeah, yeah, Where yeah. it's very there's centric about that. white issues. Yeah. Or if there's a black anything that's involved, it's immediately good no matter the circumstance. Right. And it... Uh, it's it's that happens a lot black with, or minority with in gay general. characters too yeah like like there are um we were talking about hive swap there's there's gay characters in hive swap and there's gay characters in homestuck yeah but like i went on tumblr and i'm and i saw a post that's like 
Hussy, if you put one more het person in, in hive swap, I'm going to fucking kill you. I'm like, yeah, this is the Homestuck fandom I remember. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, God. Okay. You know, it, it, it's, it's over hostility. And, and there are, there are issues in media. Like there's the bury your gays trope where, yeah. where it's always gay people that are killed off or gay women that are killed right, off, right. Or women that are killed <laughs> off or black people that are killed off. Yeah. I mean, there's that that horror movie trope. I mean, if yeah, you're black, you die first. Yeah, which and is which leads to my favorite moment in Community. What was that? Uh, the zombie attack. Oh yeah, and then and and the <laughs> Troy survives last. Yeah, and Abed's like, "Make me proud, Troy. Be the first black man to make it to the end." <laughs> I love it. Yeah, oh, God. and 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 it's it, there's also it's offended culture can become offensive culture. Yeah, because. To the point where, where, as I was saying earlier, white guilt is so prevalent on the internet and straight guilt and, and, and guilt for things that do not personally affect the person involved Yeah, that cause them to treat, um, to treat minorities, to treat gay people, to treat people who are normal. With, with kid gloves. With kind kid of. gloves. Yeah. Like, uh, black people, uh, uh, any minority, any any. I'm focusing a lot on black because yeah. that's how the but conversation it's not, it's not started. Just the internet, like yeah. I remember when I was in college, there was a lot of that too. Um, yeah. that like just whatever's normal, yeah. quote unquote normal for like our culture is is considered boring and dumb and bad, and whatever's yeah. not like like I I love. I love religion of all kinds. Like yeah. I love mythology. Yeah, religion I, I love, yeah. yeah, I'd love it. Uh, and so like I quoted something to them and they're like, all my friends were like, what is that from the Bible? I'm like, no, it's from the Quran. And they were like, Oh, the oh Quran. My God, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, fuck you. Those things are equally interesting and equally cool. Yeah. She fucking it's liberal ass bastards. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it, I say that as a libertarian. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, there's and there's a lot of issues with with right versus left being yeah. so very black and white. Unfortunately, and you're not allowed to have different. Like, there's a big culture right now where if you are even remotely centrist or don't uh, align perfectly, right? Like, especially like sadly, especially in the left. Yeah, it, if you insane. don't agree exactly with their opinions, you are the fucking devil. Yeah, I know. where it's like like I have very. Fuck, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I have very in the gray opinions on the Second Amendment. Okay. Uh, I I I there are very varying issues to where where it is it is a very hard call. Okay. Uh there's there's a lot of studies either way. Yeah. Uh so I don't know what to say. I kind of lean towards Second Amendment rights. Okay. And you know, that's, uh, and that's my not opinion. popular and that's the not a, that's no. not a popular opinion, yeah. no. Uh, Whatever. It's dude. very slightly. So, but, All but of society if I ever brought up, that up, gives a fuck. I would be just crucified <laughs> yeah, by so many would. people, and you it's would. and it's. I find that to be very wrong because obviously, is, listen to this. Listen to this whole podcast. I obviously have very, <laughs> uh, which is why we try and stay apolitical on the yeah, show. Yeah, exactly. As much as we can. And and this this is one of those episodes where unfortunately it has to we get have political to, talk about to, it. To, to to for us to really. It's get always into the hard for me because I'm a very political person. Yeah, I, of course. I, I read the paper every day and I fucking follow politics. I'm not super political, but I, I like it. funny, funny political jokes. So. I like that too. Yeah, <laughs> political so humor is awesome. It's it's very hard to to not drop a couple of those in the show, and we've had our issues with it. Anyway, hey, <laughs> Robert, what is that? Oh, is that a segue? That's a segue. Shit, we stole a joke. <laughs> oh, we stole a joke. So Alice, Madness Returns. That was a joke stolen that from was a Super <laughs> Mega Podcast. Great stolen podcast. Stolen straight from Super Mega. Yeah, actually. Oh, it, oh, it's that, oh is, that, is that a segue that's labeled <laughs> Matt Watson? <laughs> oh, God, we stole it. Shit. Oh, okay. shit. Oh, oh fuck. fuck. Call Matt. <laughs> uh, but we're, we're talking about Alice now. Yeah, Alice, Madness Returns. Yeah. Uh, and the upcoming sequel. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> So and animated series of films is that coming? Yeah, it got kickstarted. Oh god, it made his money. Yeah. Uh, 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 the, okay, so <laughs> we, the the Wizard of Oz uh, American McGee project did not get kickstarted. Good. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, if if you're watching this podcast. Uh, the day it comes out, the, we finished Alice yesterday. Yes, and, I mean, and if you haven't seen our <laughs> Alice Manage Return series, pause this podcast, watch the entire no, thing. No, just <laughs> watch a few episodes. You might like it. There's some giggles. Oh, yeah. No, my, I, I personally believe it's our funniest series. My favorite moment from Criticade comes from that series. Same here. It's uh, when when you're fighting, the first time you fight that big thing, yeah. and you're like, oh, 
Oh, it shoots bullets too. <laughs> uh, my, it's my favorite line. My favorite. <laughs> my favorite. Uh. uh <laughs> <laughs> my favorite um uh, critic aid moment also comes from alice and yeah. that is the, it's from the episode labeled the lando problem oh. <laughs> <laughs> and my, my favorite critic aid moment is the lando problem <laughs> oh man it's Are the only bit we've ever done the, uh, it's, we've done bits. i know it's fucking rough. it's it's you know what i i like that series it's hard to watch because that game is not it's ugly it's ugly and in, like not very interesting but anyone anyone who watches the series i i've, I've heard is, people is love it like, people yeah, love our exactly. series of it so. <laughs> because because we have fun yeah. staving off madness mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know as as a game it's just mediocre it's mediocre at yeah at best like there are times when it's like it's sloppy yeah there are times when it's, <laughs> it's when you have some legitimate fun uh primarily yeah, near the yeah. beginning right uh it is over long yeah way too long it's way too long uh right? it's a it, fucking long game it needed to be cut off one like halfway maybe two <laughs> chapters in, yeah uh, are out not yeah in. yeah <laughs> yeah you, you know it that would like if it was a short game like i've played uh recently i i played and beat contrast yeah. Uh, and I hated that game, but it was only like two hours. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know, uh, whatever. You didn't have time for you to set in <laughs> to hate it. Yeah, exactly. By the time I was like, this is boring. It was over. So I was like, okay, whatever. That's kind of my opinions on Limbo. Uh, yeah, fair. It's a really fair. short game. It's very short. But God, does it get really fucking boring midway through because it's the same shit. I don't think it gets boring. It's it. They could add more puzzles. I could add more puzzle element to it, but... Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> I, the thing about Alice is we mentioned this in the series. Yeah, it we was outsourced to some cheapo Chinese company. Yes. Uh, yeah. Spicy. It, this is Spicy Horse's only game, like only only like only main game, only mainline. Yeah, like, triple A game, double A, double A. Yeah. It's a double. That's, it's that's not a triple fair. A game. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, it, God, was it marketed as one though? It was, but, but it's, it's God. Not. It is not. It's it is. Not. It is cheap as fuck. Uh, uh, for something that was sold for we sixty dollars at launch, and like I'll. When I edit, I, I point it out like a couple times when like sh- things fuck up. But when I edit, mm-hmm. I see that shit all the time. Of There's course. so much shit that is just wrong. Alice's hair is just jank as fuck. Alice's hair sucks. The shadows suck. Oh, I didn't even notice the, the shadows. <laughs> the shadows are like disconnected everywhere. There's one where I, I put it up in the episode where it's like... um. Uh, there's a cutscene of Rabbit, and his his head is connected to his body, but the shadow of his head is not. <laughs> <laughs> like you can see the shadow of the body, and then like disconnected is his head shadow. It's That's really weird. Fucked up, man. Like I, I don't and understand. It, <laughs> the game has some very interesting aesthetics. Yeah, uh, very it does. Uh, hit and mostly miss. <laughs> uh, it's hit for like the first 15 minutes of every it's, world and yeah. then the world gets twisted and it's then it gets ugly. it's pretty. Yeah. Uh, but and it, it, it makes a very active choice to make itself unappealing to look at. Yes. Which I don't think was which the right is, choice. No, not it's at all. It's very stupid yeah. for them to do that. And, but then there are like other levels, like the, the level right before um, Mysterious East is like a broken up jank world yeah. for no reason. Mm-hmm. And then you go to the Mysterious East, which is just offensive it's like that's the game like but it's it crosses the line every once mm-hmm. in a while and it's very it's made by chinese like a chinese company and yeah. you're just fighting these japanese, japanese stereotypes yeah, exactly. and it's like what the it's fuck like, are oh, you doing god you can't <laughs> don't bring yeah. race war into this it would be yeah exactly it would what be is like this, dream we, daddy <laughs> It would be like if if they made if if Americans made a Western game and you were just killing like Mexicans. Yeah, like, that's exactly what it would be like. And and we would be like, that's super offensive. But they don't see anything wrong with shipping. Shout that outs kind to of you, game. Call of Juarez, the cartel. Oh right, I forgot that's an actual game. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that was made in a very different time. Yes, I so. know. Yeah. Shout out to Resident <laughs> Evil Six, who doesn't understand. Wait, Resident Evil Six. Wait, what did Resident Evil Six do? Uh, the game takes place in Africa. So That's Resident Evil Five. Oh no! I sure, I'm sure. No, it's sure no. Six. Resident Evil Five is one of my favorite games. The one that takes place in Africa yeah. is Five. Yep. Oh, okay. Six is the one that takes place in Raccoon City. Again. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what? Whatever. One of the Resident Evils that takes place in Africa when all the zombies are black and you're two white characters. No, 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 no. One of the characters is not white. One of the characters is black. Are you sure? Yeah. What are you thinking of right now? Resident Evil. Chris the, and Sheva. There was a whole thing where the entirety of the game was offensive because it took place in Africa. Yeah, but that's why they added the second character who is black. That's why they added some more white people to the to the crowds of zombies. 
and some more <laughs> ambigu- ambiguous. After the game, but it was a huge controversy when the game came out. It would no, it was a controversy before the game came out for trailers. Uh, I followed this very, very depthly because I love Resident Evil Five. I don't love Resident Evil at all. Oh <laughs> well, I don't like Resident Evil at all. I like Resident Evil Five. Okay, yeah, that's that is one game that I very specifically have a stake in, so I, I'm I'm very well versed in it. <laughs> uh, okay, whatever. And, yeah, but but still, you know, yeah, whatever we're talking about the understand your audience and understand yeah. race relations it's it, it weird. still looks bad when a white character is mowing down hordes of black people yeah <laughs> uh yeah and then punching a boulder into a, a river of lava with his bare fucking hands <laughs> what a great video game yeah anyway not because you're shooting black- <laughs> <laughs> alice sucks uh, uh yeah it's, alice it's, is i wouldn't say it's that's I think it sucks. It sucks. Yeah, it, it sucks. sucks. It's, it's like I float on it between sentence yeah. and sentence. <laughs> well, there's there's parts that are fun, and, mm-hmm. and you know the basic combat is fun. It's, I I would say the basic platforming is fun. the The combat no, is super boring. The basic com- uh, the basic platforming is irritating because of the fucking janky ass quadruple jump system. <laughs> but I guess you could say that about both. Like yeah, at times. At times the platforming is fun, and at times the combat's fun. But yeah, just like, but the thing is, the combat's fun at first. At first, and then they introduce really characters boring. that just take a a million hits, yeah. no matter what difficulty. B have shielding that you need to wait for a very specific attack to break right. through. C that you just need to wait a fucking million years to be able to hit. Just in general, there's one item like uh, the the umbrella only has one purpose, which is for one enemy to hit that one thing back. Yeah, and then break his shield and then beat him. That's and, it. And That's uh, it. when you unlock more things that are like explosive. It doesn't break that guy's shield, no. which could be a very easy <laughs> game design fix. Yeah, exactly. It, it would give that's extra... Like, like three lines of code. Exactly. Yeah, and that's like that's something that gives your game... Like like in Legend of Zelda, when something makes sense like that, it just works. Exactly. Uh, and, and Especially in Breath of the fun. Wild. Especially in Breath of the Wild. That's yeah. true. The, yeah, there's so much shit in Breath of the Wild where you're like... Can I do this? And the answer is almost always, yeah. You yeah, can. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and it's always silly and funny. Yeah, it's always fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, except when there was a very, sp- in Breath of the Wild, not in Alice, yeah. there was a very specific moment where there was some guys at the bottom of a cliff, and I was up at the top of the mountain, and I saw a boulder, yeah. and I went to go roll the boulder down, and it missed him by a hair. Oh, <laughs> and I was like, oh, this oh, seemed like no. this was very specifically designed to yeah. feel cool. And it just uh, it, it, like, there are points like that where they're oh yeah designed, no but the, like but <laughs> like that one. was such like a boner killer. Uh, my favorite thing. Not I think that they've, I get boners from playing video games. <laughs> I think they've patched it now. But my favorite thing used to be you could put a metal door um, on the bottom and then on top of that put one of those metal carts yeah. from the mines and then use your magnet to raise the metal door and ride in the cart and fly infinitely. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like there's shit like that that you can. It's a lot of fun. Or in Sonic Boom, uh, if you double jump his <laughs> knuckles and then pause the game, you double jump at every <laughs> sets. double jump forever. And then you can fly. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Alice and Sonic Boom remind me of each other a lot. They're, they're pretty similar, They're yeah. pretty similar. I, like, I, I, Alice, obviously, is better combat. D- fair. <laughs> <laughs> because but, uh, it's one button combat on Sonic Boom. Yeah. And Alice at least, at has, least has a, a couple buttons variety. and some guns that are dumb. Whatever. Uh, yeah, the, the weapons are, are underpowered or overpowered. Yeah. There's never a point once you get any weapon that isn't the knife. <laughs> <laughs> the knife is su- like yeah, the, once, once you get another weapon, the knife is useless. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and poopy and dumb. Yeah. And then the game it's is kind of just poopy and dumb. It's ugly. Yeah. And the story is offensive to yes. people with mental disorders. I mean, it's yeah. I mean, it should just be offensive to you as a person. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's, uh, it's ugly and stupid yeah it makes me mad yeah ah! so go watch it we, <laughs> we we love it actually like we love the series because we have a lot of fun it's it's like watching a bad movie with someone i agree it's, it's like it's, it's like the room of video games yeah exactly where there's clearly a lot of heart and idea put into it but right. god it just never god, fucking it's just works not good yeah <laughs> though a lot so, of people like this game unironically and no one likes the room unironically except yeah. for tommy wiseau that's true but he made it, so he might be a little bit biased. I'm sure American McGee fucking <laughs> loves it. Obviously, he does, think, or else he well, wouldn't fucking kickstart a sequel. Maybe. What would you like to see in an Alice sequel? Um, good gameplay. Would I be agree. One. <laughs> uh, I, I would like to see if if they could combine the platforming and a, a lot of the Alice's problems comes from uh, an inelegance in design, where yeah. it's just like 
things are thrown together instead of working together. Like no, there's no yeah. synthesis between things. I think there could be a lot more of that. I agree with that. I, I also fun. believe that <laughs> melding the beautiful with the ugly instead of just having beautiful and yeah. ugly segments. I would like to see like a little bit of fridge horror kind of shit where it's like What's that uh, fridge horror is a TV trope where something everything seems fine it's not played up for horror but when you think about it for a little bit it is kind of messed up can you give an example of that that sounds interesting um well an example of that might be like batman and robin's relationship when you when you see them go out and fight crime it's like oh yeah he's his ward but when you think about what batman is doing to to robin to all of his robins psychologically psychologically it's real fucked up yeah okay or like the fact that he he forced dick to hunt down his his parents killers when he was a kid yeah like, okay that's like it true. makes sense in the comic but when you think about it you're like whoa that's a little and that's things up. that later later writers it, it, touch on yeah exactly uh, and so i'd like to see a little bit more of that in alice where it's okay. like the world is beautiful and everything but then you see shit and you're like Maybe this is kind of horrible, actually. Yeah. Maybe this is a little bit creepy. Because the game treats the, the, the beautiful Wonderland like it's, it's just perfect. Yeah, exactly. Like, like it's, it's pure. the It's the best place that Alice can right. possibly be. But, but it's but a no, delusion. It's, it's a delusion <laughs> of, of a tortured mind. Yeah. Uh, and instead of, instead of adding in ugly elements to the beautiful, mm-hmm. it's just you go through a beautiful segment for a second, and then, and you, then go you go through, through an ugly. And, yeah. it, and it's, it, it, it creates the, the idea... That delusional worlds are, are better, better than yeah than anything, yeah. including reality, and that's. I mean, you, you got to put it in context too. It was like 2011 when it came out. Yes, and it was like that was a big time for it's like very post kids, <laughs> post Alice in Wonderland the film. Yeah, yeah, it was it was very much like oh man, I'm such a tortured mind. Aren't I so cool? Yeah, new I'm Taylor like, Swift. <laughs> Actually, that's something that happened to me last week. I gave um, Look What Which You Made Me Do another chance. Oh, God. <laughs> I was like, okay, I heard it once and I hated it. Maybe I'll just try it. Did you watch the music video? Yeah. Oh, fuck. And yeah. I was like, at, there was like, there's like that moment when it's like actually a song. And I was like, you know what? This yeah, isn't the part as where bad as I remember. Before the chorus every time. Yeah, where I'm it like, seems like it's going to be good. Okay. okay. And then oh, it's just, look, look what, what you made me do. do. <laughs> look what you made me do. And like, oh, look fuck. Look you just made me. This look is, what you this just is, made me. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. Yeah, it's really bad musically. It's lyrically. metered out terribly. God, oh, it's the worst. so fucking funny. I hate it. I, I get, I got baited into like almost liking it. I'm just about <laughs> obsessed with new Taylor Swift. <laughs> I, I, oh. I hate it. I hate it so much. I just cannot stop. I can't but, wait for the album to come out so I can listen to it. I just I need loved to know Taylor Swift though. Like, I, I never really loved Taylor I love, Swift. I liked her music and I love her and. I I, don't know. I never God really damn. had strong opinion. Like I I thought she was always like an okay constant. You know, like I guess there's always yeah. Taylor Swift on the radio, and she's always gonna sound just <laughs> nice fair. and whatever, pleasant. Yeah, it's fine. It's not nothing I special. Liked I liked, I liked uh, uh, Trouble was a good song. That's yeah, it. That's a good song. Uh, there's a couple. I think. Love Story is pretty good. Love Story's good. Uh, her, the her more music stuff. that she released, the more the worse she got. In I don't know opinion, if that's true. 1985 was pretty good. I I didn't listen to the whole album. I'm just talking about her. Called? I'm talking about her hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Whatever. But fuck, new Taylor's hilarious. <laughs> new Taylor Swift. Uh, her is just her second single up. that she released a couple days ago. Just oh, as didn't... bad. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, no. It's 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 not just as bad. It's just more generic. Okay. Like I actually prefer "Look What You Made Me Do" because it's more interesting <laughs> to sure. think about. I love, but I love "Look What You Made Me Do" because I I think about like when they were designing it and they were oh yeah they obviously were like this is gonna play in every fucking club this is gonna be yeah. the song that people fucking dance to and shit and everyone's laughing <laughs> at it <laughs> exactly it's so it's a, funny it's so embarrassing <laughs> it just and you know what it's, it's really getting us talking it's That's got a true. lot of people listening That's to taylor true. swift i mean the video it got mad views <laughs> i know and it still does but it's so bad it's, it's <laughs> hilarious oh god and you know this is gonna work for one song yeah and maybe one more yeah. And then Taylor Swift is going to fizzle out if she but keeps like, doing the shtick. Exactly. But like that's a problem for Taylor Swift cuz this like like you think about a song like Friday uh and now Rebecca Black actually has a career yeah. because she she built it off of that. But Taylor Swift already has a career and then she put out a shit song. Oh yeah. I think that this is going to be 
horrible for her and i can't mm-hmm. wait to watch the implosion and it's just it's so it's edgy it's gross it's very edgy the music video ends with her kicking other taylor swifts down a hill <laughs> like what the fuck like the love story <laughs> yeah, taylor Swift. exactly like and she's like i'm sorry ta- <laughs> old taylor can't come to the phone right now why oh, oh she's, she's dead i actually kind of <laughs> love the delivery of that line it's so funny like as a cohesive message of the song <laughs> it's so fucking funny i know oh like my God. did she mean for te- for people to take that line in seriously i don't know i i i think so i think the lack of irony is why i find it so funny. but you know we're all gonna listen to that fucking album <laughs> oh, of course we are i'm not gonna buy it i'm just gonna no. watch it on youtube or something god no fuck it fucking hell. it's hilarious it's so funny comment your thoughts on new taylor <laughs> if you have defense of new taylor anyway, hit me up yeah please i mean i'd love to hear your argument for that shit uh but anyway she looks that's great a though place. She's very pretty. Uh, that's 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 what I can say. I've I've always loved how Taylor Swift looks. She's very yeah. pretty. She's beautiful. And new Taylor, she's kind of kind of trying hard. She's I don't think so. I think she's trying too hard to be sexy. I don't think the zombie one's that hot. I'll say it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I know we're doing a, a controversial that. opinion. <laughs> yeah. Controversy. Do do you have a do you have an improv game this week? Oh yeah, I, I we're gonna do. I think we mentioned it on the last one you guys listened to, but we're uh, gonna do. Oh yeah, yeah, we mentioned at the very end that we're gonna start doing improv start games. Start doing on the next it, yeah. and if not, we're gonna start doing improv games at the end of every yeah every, every episode to, uh, to get us up. Yeah, last last because because we record right at like the podcast is the first thing we do. That's yeah. why they're more chill. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Uh, and we need to be less chill for the let's play shit. Yeah. So last week we did this and it was horrible. It was because I, I just had Hamlet on hand. Now I have a play that I did, uh, what was a that? tragedy called Radium Girls. Oh, I, I remember when the school that we both went to, but not <laughs> at the same time, did Radium Girls and I didn't see it. Yeah, uh, it's it's a it's a good play. It's about girl like it's about life in the 20s before people knew that radiation sickness is a thing and that radiation can cause cancer as well as cure it. Um, so it's all about these girls who used to work with it every day and they, like, they eat it, like when they paint shit, it's, it's real tragic. And so we're going to make comedy off of it. Yeah. We're going to do, <laughs> we're going to do a game called actor's nightmare. Yes. Where I have the script. Yeah. And, and I, I can only read lines from the <laughs> script to respond to things that Jacob is and, saying. And I have to try and be like, what scene is this? How do I make this work? And it's really hard. It's very so, hard. So give, give us a pass here. Yeah. Uh, Okay, okay, let's, uh, let's, let's find a starting point. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Excuse me. You, you can go ahead and start, Jacob. Good friend, good friend. What? You, you can go a script. Oh, wait, do... Okay. <laughs> I apparently don't know how this game works. Okay, uh... Then give me a sec. We'll just edit out sure, the silence. Sure, sure. If I just edit out that whole bit. <laughs> mm. Oh, gross. Fucking here. Oh yeah, I saw that in your cup. I just make, didn't make any comment about it though. <laughs> well, I didn't think I was gonna. Okay, that's gross. I don't like <laughs> I love that chorus too because it like ends. It ends on like a a poorly metered out non rhyme, and you're like, oh, this is this shit's about to. The, there's like the first point where you're like, oh, I guess this kind of sucks a little bit and then she goes into the chorus and it's just a disaster oh what a masterpiece of crap (laughs) okay sure is radium the cure for all cancer uh yeah radium is the cure what will you do with the radium uh probably uh put it over the the cancer lump and cure it Madam Curie. Well, I'm sorry, man. That's uh, that's how you use it, right? No more questions. I, oh, sorry. I just, I guess I'm, I don't know how to do this shit. I will escort you, escort you personally to Washington, where President Harding will present the gift of one gram of radium. Oh, that's, is that a lot of radium? I don't even, I don't even know. <laughs> radium isn't just for scientists to study. Really? I, I think it. It should be, at least at this point in time. The average American can share in its glory every night. Every night? Luminous clocks. 
Luminous watches. That's a lot of... That's a lot. That seems like a lot to me. The telephone. Uh, how the fuck are you going to use radium? The automobile. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you understand radium. Watches. Absolutely. Yeah, wh- what? <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you it's hard. It's really Fair bad enough. and I flounder. No, I flounder more. There, I'll, we can trade I'll off. I'll pounder. <laughs> Barely knew <laughs> Okay. okay. <laughs> so you, you find your starting place. <laughs> sure. Maybe we should do different games than this one. We should. Because this we is. Will. Yeah. I just wanted to do this one first. Comment some improv games in, in the in the in those dang old comments below. Yeah. Maybe we should have made an appointment. I know. It's just. I I just think the warts might go away if we give it enough time. But it's a busy place, Catherine. If you don't have an appointment, maybe you should make one. Well, I mean, we could just go walk up to the desk. I'm sorry. I don't find anything under Shab. Wait, that's a different person. Whoops, <laughs> I fucked it up. <laughs> Let me Woo! the starting point. There's a lot of characters on this. Okay. Woo! <laughs> uh, fuck, fuck. Oh, wait, I don't think I understood this game. Are you supposed to just continue the dialogue? Yeah. I thought you were just supposed to... You're supposed to do the scene as though it's a, the scene, but, like, I have the script and you don't. I thought you just find <laughs> random bits of dialogue from the play. No. <laughs> well, that explains why I did all those things, remember? Remember yeah. that, you guys? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Irene Rudolph? Uh, yes. She worked at the radium plant? That's me? Nothing. What? What are you, what are, what are you trying to say? The company is in full compliance with all state health and labor regulations. They ordered an analysis of the paint... Nothing? Miss, really? You, are you saying that I have, I am a radium girl? <laughs> That's the health officer, Miss, uh... Miss, 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 Miss Swiss, right? As I was saying, <laughs> the analysis shows there's no phosphorus in the paint. There's no phosphorus anywhere in the, in the plant. Well, how are we supposed to be prosperous without any phosphorus? Miss Young... Miss Young toured the plant herself. She found nothing amiss. I'm sorry. Well, I don't understand why you're so sorry. It, it, it doesn't seem like there's any problem with the paint. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> That's our funny, funny, funny improv game. It's not as much fun. It's good for us. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do better improv games on the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> Critica. Hey. Uh, subscribe. What a great episode of Criticate. What did you think, Jacob? It was good. Are you going to drop a subscription? Uh, I'm not because I'm already subscribed. Whoa! If you want to be cool like me, you should subscribe too. You should probably be cool. Probably be cool. Yeah, only cool people subscribe to Criticate. Yeah, only not cool people don't.